What is up everybody, my name is Ben Hillman and today I would like to tell you about seven different tips that I have for Premiere Pro to make you a better, faster, stronger, elite editor. Okay, maybe not elite editor, but hopefully it'll push you in the right direction. And before we get into the video, please, please, please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell so you get notified for every single video that is uploaded. It really helps me, helps the channel grow. Let's get into the video. So the first tip that I have for you is stay organized. Now I know I talked about this in the video that I did a couple videos ago, but this is just kind of a little more in depth, nitty gritty explanation of what that is. And this all starts when you're actually importing your footage. So I'm gonna highlight everything I like to call them mags, the folders where the videos live, just because that's kind of grandfathered in from the film world, you know, the film magazine that you would film on. So we're gonna call this mag1, and then the name of the camera that we are importing from, and then dash whatever the type of content that we shot is. So for this, let's just say it's B-roll. So we've imported our footage, now let's put that into our Premiere project. As you can see, everything in the project is already super, super organized. It's organized a similar way that we organize it in the file structure on the computer. That's so important for you to have because you wanna be able to access things as fast as you can think about them. But also, I want everything to be color coded because when you're looking at the project bin here, you wanna be able to navigate and find what you're looking for. If it's video, I wanna be able to know immediately that I'm talking about a video. So we can see all of our video folders are Iris, all of our audio are Caribbean, so on and so forth. For the second tip, let's talk about something that I have historically been bad with myself and have only recently started to correct this habit, and that's version numbers. There's something that everyone does at some point in their life, and that's call the export of something final. Your exports are never going to be final. I could finish this project right now and I could export it and it could be called final and I could upload it to YouTube and then never see it for at least three years or something like that. But then let's say four years from now or three years, whatever it is, I wanna make some changes to this project and that final export is no longer final. Then when I export it, what am I gonna call it? Final, final? Final, final, no, this one, this, this actual final. Let's just get rid of that and call things version numbers, just the latest version. If you wanna go back and find something that you worked on, like you had an effect that was in version three that's better than the one in your version four, you can go back and you can find that effect and place it in there. It's not gone forever. So tip number three involves graphics. Some people, I'm sure, use After Effects to create graphics, export those graphics, and then import them into your Premiere project. That can get a little bit messy, especially if you wanna make changes to those graphics and you don't wanna actually lock the graphics in place. Let's say we wanna do some crazy cool graphics right here. Let's select this, right click, replace with After Effects composition. Boom. Let's do text like this. V, cool guy. Quick little animation. And you can see a rough kind of version of it is going to appear in your Premiere project. And if you wanna go in and you wanna make changes to it, you absolutely can. Like, let's just say we wanna delete it. And then look, it's not there. So a couple of notes here. Number one, have an After Effects project that is already open and labeled the same as your Premiere project, but of course in an After Effects folder. This way, like if you don't have After Effects open, it's just gonna be a blank After Effects project. And you don't wanna have like a bunch of different After Effects projects that you have to go in and locate all of your different effects and everything like that. So this is super helpful to just stay organized like we were talking about before. Everything's organization, that is the key. All right, tip number four is absolutely my favorite tip of all of them. I use macros. Big thing that people usually will do in Premiere or just editing in general is you nest your sequence. So we wanna select everything, right click, nest it, title it nested sequence, and there we go. We're titling it title, I guess. Not a lot of clicks, of course. It's not like the end of the world. You're probably not gonna be frustrated by having to spend the time to go to the menu, select the thing that you wanna select. Totally get it. However, I personally believe that if you can reduce your clicks overall, 
that's gonna help you in the long run. If I just press one button, I can nest the sequence. And in addition to that, I also use something called Keyboard Maestro. And it's particularly cool because you can use MIDI devices or USB devices that have these buttons that don't actually function as keyboard buttons. And you can control those to be a bunch of these different buttons all together. I'll link uh, some of those USB affiliate links in the description below so that you can check them out. I use this Behringer X-Touch Mini, super, super great. So this next tip is actually one of the only places where I throw organization a little bit out the window, and that's through proxy workflow. The gist of it is, is with proxies, you're making a smaller file, a smaller video than the original file and you're just linking to that smaller one instead of the larger one and so the computer is just able to process it a little bit better so we want to create proxies what do we do right click proxy and create proxies i use the 1280 by 720 ratio so that it stays at 16 by 9. Uh, you can also use this 1024 by 540. it's a little bit smaller maybe it'll be a little bit better if your computer isn't up to snuff but you do get these weird black bars on the side and it can be weird if you're working with graphics. And then I just put them in a proxy folder with everything all in there because it's just all there. It's just super easy to navigate. And you can get this little button right here. If you go to plus, you find the toggle proxies right here and drag that into your program monitor right here. And you can click that to toggle the proxies on or off. I've also mapped it to a button on my keyboard, hence the macros we just talked about. I press zero, the proxies will toggle on and off. Super great. The penultimate tip that I have is all about editing audio. There are some ways that you can do this similar to what we did with the replacing with an After Effects composition. Let's say that you wanna take this audio that you have right here and you want to master it, you wanna make some changes to it. Maybe you wanna remove a hum or a fuzz. You can right click, you can edit that clip in Adobe Audition. You can make changes while the Audition program is open and they'll be reflected in your Premiere project. What I like to do is if we go to where this audio was imported, you can see that I've made a copy here. We can make a bunch of changes to this. You can do all your mastering. You can get rid of your fuzz, everything like that. Then all you do is you go to this in the project window, you replace footage and you find that new file right there and you replace it, boom. Alrighty, we have reached the last tip of this video, and that is to create a transcript of an interview that you've done so that it's much easier for you to go in and find the great bits of that interview. YouTube automatically transcribes videos. And what you can do is you can go to your video, these three dots right here, open your transcript, and then you see there's all of everything that was talked about right here. You command F, mental health, Boom, mental health. That's where we talk about mental health. So I, I know that that's there. And you can do this, you can upload, like you can export this entire interview. You can upload that to YouTube and it'll create a transcript like this one. And then you can find that exact time code in Premiere so you can make those cuts in your actual project. All right, so those are my seven tips to help you become the best Premiere Pro editor of all time. And if you've got some tips that are maybe better than this, or maybe some of the tips that I gave you could have been done a little bit differently, let me know in the comments below, good or bad. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. It helps me know if my videos are good or bad, or if I should make them better or whatever. And if you love this video and you want more videos from me, you can hit the subscribe button right down there and hit the bell so you make sure that you get every new video that I put out. My name is Ben Hillman and this has been some Slacker Stuff. I will see you next time.